feelings are fun. They're great when you have them. They're sometimes devastating when you don't. And sometimes it can be the most powerful tool that God uses to cause people to turn to Him or to seek Him in some way that causes them to know Him in a more intimate way. Because sometimes feelings are those things that are a bridge for us to get out of ourselves and look towards God. That Sometimes we get distracted by things that are going on all around us. So God uses feelings sometimes to bring us to a place of understanding or comprehension. It helps motivate us in our thought process. It helps change us in our emotional balance to focus in on something that's being the direction or the object of our feelings. It's kind of like what caffeine does. You know, caffeine kind of speeds up things. You know, it's like an engine. It kind of like is like your your power drink, so to speak, or we could even say a Pepsi cuz Pepsi has caffeine in it. Oh, <laughs> I got to admit, you know, I could drink a lot of Pepsi and not get much caffeine out of it for me. And often I do. But I think I use Pepsi as a placebo. Oh well. Such as it is. But feelings are like an engine that they take up a certain amount of energy. They produce a certain amount of output. It causes you to go in a certain direction. It causes you to do something. Feelings will do that. But feelings aren't always the best way to operate. They are a way that God uses, but they're not the only way that God wants us to motivate ourselves or to be moved by His Spirit. Sometimes it's a matter of choice, and we have to keep control over our feelings because like an engine that you put in a car, you don't just have an engine running. I mean, it's nice, you know, you could put it up on blocks, to be honest. You don't have to attach any wheels to it. You don't have to put a transmission there. You don't have to put it in a car. You can actually put an engine on a block of wood or whatever may be a stand, and you can run the engine all day long. You keep it going. You know, it could have gas. You know, you keep gas pumped to it. You know, you can have it, you know, running, running, running. And that's what emotions can do. They can run without accomplishing anything. But you see, an engine was designed to be put inside of a car or inside of a building to generate some type of wheels that are moving or some type of flywheel to generate electricity or some way in some power plant to perform some kind of function. And that's kind of what emotions do for us is that feelings and emotions go hand in hand. And so just like a engine has a transmission, so too feelings have emotions attached with them. So when you have feelings, a lot of times you have to know what to do with them, and that's where faith comes in. Faith is that ability to put the engine where it belongs in an engine block, and put it in a car and have it drive down the street. So a lot of times that can be a very positive experience. But feelings always must be controlled. The engine can't be over-revved, because if you over-rev an engine, you'll blow a gasket. You'll blow a piston right right out from its, its head, the head gasket, or the cylinders. We know that, because you probably have done that. <laughs> well, maybe not. But we do know that engines have to run within certain boundaries. And those boundaries are what faith does for our feelings. They are the boundaries that cause our feelings to operate in a certain direction. So, feelings are good, but faith is what controls those feelings. So your faith must be used in such a way as to control your feelings, not to let feelings run amok and to just take you wherever you feel like you ought to go. Your faith is what generates the direction. Feelings just give you the motivation to do it. Be strong and of a good courage. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. 
My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. If God be for us, then who can be against us? The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. I will not fear what man can do unto me. Through thee will we push down our enemies. Through thy name will we tread them under foot that rise up against us. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Arise therefore and be doing, for the Lord thy God is with thee. I see so many times people either belligerently doing things because they just say God's with them so they just go out and do whatever they want or acting as though God isn't with them because they really don't talk to Him. You kind of get a balance of that by way of how people's peoples, how people use their feelings to generate that concept of whether God is with them. You see, when they feel good, they feel like God is with them. When they don't feel good, they feel like God's not with them. And that's not what God said. God said, I'm with you in your feelings. I'm with you whether you feel like it or not. Your feelings are irrelevant to whether I'm with you. I am with you because I said I am. That's faith. What God said, we accept. That's faith. It's a acceptance of the things that are obvious to us, not by way of reason or rationale, but simply because they are. And they have a factual basis that we can identify with our intelligent faith that says, yes, I know that these are facts. I know that this is true, and I have put my faith into that fact. And that's what the reality of Scripture is, is that we can put our faith in the person who has accomplished and done that for us, which is Jesus. So, because he has, we don't have to prove them or to approve them. We simply have to accept that Jesus has done it. And since he has, we can accept by way of knowing him and seeing how he did it, the same aspect applies to us. We just have to have faith in Jesus that he will accomplish that in us also. So sometimes people get that kind of confused. You know, they, It's like they want to generate some kind of peace, love, and joy. You know, it's like, oh, i got to feel it before I can do it. No. You know, well, you know, I kind of had a feeling that I should have. You know, well, then do it. You know, I mean, either talk to God and get the reality of him speaking to you or go by your feelings because, you know, it's an engine and it might be motivating you in the right direction, but me personally, I kind of like doing things when God tells me to because then I'm not worried about whether I feel like it or I don't. Because you see, some days, maybe you're like me. Some days, I just don't feel like it. <laughs> and that's when you run into problems because what if God tells you to do something and you don't feel like it? <laughs> that's where you better have a lot of faith or you better really believe in grace. <laughs> Because without faith, it's impossible to please them. But without grace, you're going to get in trouble. Because <laughs> His mercy endures forever. But believe me, you could push the boundaries a little too far. So all I can say is, don't go by your feelings. You know, they're nice, they're good, they're wonderful. You know, it's great to have them. They're a nice engine that can motivate you. But you know, an engine has to be taken care of. It's got to go in for mileage. You know, it's got to go in for checkups. You got to put the oil in it. You got to give it gas. You know, got to make sure it's all taken care of. But you know, faith. Faith just grows and grows. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So, really, there's not a whole lot you got to do to faith, you know. As a matter of fact, really, most of the time, when it comes to faith, it's going to sound a little weird. All you got to do is listen. Wow, what a novel idea.